Okay. This is January the 24th, 1999. We're at the Pasadena Civic Center, and this is the second and last workshop of this year with the Natural Health Foundation. I would like to say that all words uttered by the people at the table are copyrighted C1999, and we would prefer that you didn't reproduce it. We've had bad things done by people who misreproduced them, claim that I've said certain things that I haven't. Everything voiced here today will be expressed as opinion only, as given for informational and scientific purposes only, so that I cannot be held by the powers that be for practicing medicine without a license. I'll tell you this one more time. I don't know how many times you've heard it, but it keeps happening. My attorneys will not let me talk or answer a telephone unless I know who's on the other side because most of the people who phone me ask questions about health. They say, my grandmother has cancer and she has Alzheimer's. If I were to answer one question that they ask on my telephone, and the government assures me that we have a Central Avenue tap downtown office, and they choose to tape record that, I can go to jail because I theoretically live in a free country, but I can't talk about health. I'm not a licensed physician. And much of this is not approved by the Food and Drug Administration at this time. So nobody, under any circumstances, attempt to call me. I don't like it this way. I'm just trying to stay out of jail. We have a lot of problems. I have been physically attacked, beaten up, and bloodied by AIDS Act Up at the corner of 34th and 8th in New York City because I was going to tell these people how they could cure their AIDS. And they said if I said anything about curing their AIDS, they would beat me up, burn down the New Yorker Hotel and the Pennsylvania Hotel. We had two lectures scheduled. The police came and said, these people are serious. AIDS Act Up is one of the most in-your-face organizations that's working for Burr's Welcome Pharmaceutical House. The pharmaceutical house is paying their bills, their rent, their meeting place over on East New York. And if you tell them how to cure their AIDS, they'll lose $20,000 a year customers for combination cocktail therapies. The police said under no circumstances use the front door of the hotel. I was staying at the New Yorker. They said do not use the elevators in the hotel. Use the service elevators in the back. Well, I made the mistake of using the front door, the revolving door, you know it, at the hotel. The last day I was there to catch a tram to the airport, and they beat me up and bloodied me while a guy standing across the street with the telephoto video filmed me. When I got to the hotel, I went and stopped in the men's room, and I was so bloodied I had to take my shirt off and clean my face and go into my luggage for clean clothes before I could fly home. This is what people feel about a cure that you can do for yourselves. So the main thing I have to tell you today is just four words. Take back your power. And there is a way. There has been a perfectly valid cure for HIV, which was invented at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the spring of 1990 and published only once, and I hope you can pick up a copy of this paper and take it home with you tonight, because there will be dozens of answers to problems in this paper that we put there, and 99% of the questions that you ask me are answered in full 
detail in your paper. The papers cost five dollars, which is what almost uh, what we paid for them at Kinko's. It gets seven cents a page. The paper is thirty or thirty-two pages long. And in March thirtieth, nineteen uh, sixty-one, page two o seven, the biomedicine section of Science News announced that Dr. Colley, Stephen Colley, K-A-A-L-I, and his colleague, Dr. Wyman, had invented a perfectly good cure for AIDS. And this shook the hell out of the pharmaceutical industry that was making $20,000 per patient, and they suppressed it. And since that time, you have not read one word about this cure. And what was the matter with this cure? It could be done for $1.32 per patient and not $20,000 a year. That's the worst thing that you could possibly do. And the uh, article is reprinted on page 7 of your paper, which I hope you take home tonight. Then a little bit after this, longevity, December 1982, page 14, printed a disclaimer where the doctors who had invented this cure, here's the longevity and here it is on your page 7, said this isn't ready yet. It had been ready for the public for two years at this time. They said it isn't ready. It's not fit for human use. So what you are going to learn here in this room tonight, if you don't know about it already, is the way that a cure for all infectious disease can be affected inexpensively with a high degree of certainty, with no side effects, no pharmaceutical reactions, nothing but good news for the body. Is that you, Bob? I couldn't see you under the cap. Bob Short, Dr. Short, an old friend of mine. <laughs> 1959, it goes back when we were both little children. <laughs> so we've republished so that you will know that it exists and it's legitimate and it's been announced to the American public. Uh, four of the only articles of 34,000 on AIDS that had been published, AIDS and its cure, which tell the truth. The rest of the time you have been brainwashed by John D. Rockefeller Sr., who in the early 1900s bought controlling interest in a couple of pharmaceutical houses, he studied electromedicine. He found that if the public were to learn about electromedicine, it would bankrupt him. So he sent a chap named, <coughs> was that uh, Abraham? Abraham, yeah. Abraham Flexner, F-L-E-X-N-E-R, with his money to Congress and the Senate, got the permission of Congress and the Senate that he should have Flexner Forbid, forbid the study of electricity in any university in America. And this included Harvard, MIT, it included the University of Southern California, and all of the other great medical schools. And how do you feel about living in the United States of America, a free country, where your medical colleges have been specifically forbidden by the Flexner Report for learning anything about electricity. Why? Because the sure cure for breast cancer at this time, about 1906, was putting one needle into the tumor in the breast, four needles surrounding it, making the center needle, the anode, the positive terminal, about nine volts positive with respect 
to the four negative terminals surrounding the tumor in the breast and kill